Hello, once again, my name is Brother McGill, and I'm back with another lesson called The Promise of Life, which is a Christ Jesus. I didn't put it up there, but I will show you through scripture that the promise of life is a Christ Jesus, eternal life, taught strictly from the Bible. Not what I'm saying, but it's taught strictly from the Bible. It's good to be back. I thank God for that. And for those who are staying strong in the group grew in, this channel or other channels who teach you the gospel strictly from the Bible, who go to church to hear the gospel uh, taught strictly from the Bible, I pray you stay strong, never give up on your eternal soul, keep doing what you're doing, put God first in your life, and I promise you everything else will fall in place, but you got to put God first in your life. Don't give up when you make a mistake or you fall down, because we all make mistakes and fall down. When I say to you, I say to myself as well, but you got to stay strong with God and never give up on your eternal soul. Now, by me saying that, before we go to a lesson, let's go to the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, we come to you, dear Lord, thank you for all the things that you do for us, working us up this morning, and give our food to eat and clothes on our back and shoes upon our feet. We thank you so much for that. We thank you, dear Lord, for those who really and yeah, truly believe in you, dear Lord, by your word and follow you by the gospel. We pray for them, dear Lord, to keep up, watch over, protect them, keep us safe the only way you can. Amen. We thank you, dear Lord, for so many things that you do for us. I mean, sometimes we would take you for granted, dear Lord, not saying thank you. But we so much thank you for all the things that you do for us, dear Lord. We just, we just can't, you know, say, uh, say enough how much that we thank you for that. Father, we say that, Father God, I pray for those out here who still suffer from, through this, uh, about this pandemic which, that happened a couple of years back, who mm -hmm. wars around this world, dear Lord, and so many things are going on, Father God, so many scammers, so, so many liars, so many backbiters, so many haters really came out, dear Lord, the last couple of years, Father God, and we just pray, Father God, you keep the true worshipers, the true believers strong, dear Lord, and what they're going through out here, Father God, guys, there's so much evil out here, and Satan trying his best each and every day to turn her from the light of the glorious gospel that's from you to his dark ways, Father God. And so, Father God, we pray just keep us strong no matter what goes on in life, no matter what happens. Help us to stay strong, overcome evil with good, and keep fighting for salvation and righteousness. Righteousness, excuse me, in your holy and divine name. So, once again, Father God, for those who are suffering and going through a terrible time through the wars and and this pandemic still go out lingering on. We pray for good Lord, he help them in bad times, bless them in good times. We pray, Father God, to give you all the wisdom and the knowledge that I need through your word to teach your word correctly to the hearers, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. Those who are strong or who are hungry and thirsty for the truth, dear Lord, will understand. And for those who don't, <coughs> many come to know you for everlasting too late. And we pray all these prayers to you in your most divine holy name. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. The promise of life. This lesson is about the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to show you that, not what I'm saying, but talk once again strictly from the Bible. Do not take your eternal soul lightly. We in the last days. Look what's going on right now. So much hatred, backbiting, and lying out here. So we rude people out here, selfish people out here, people don't care about they own eternal soul no more. All they care about is money, popularity, fame, the fortune. They, that, that's all they care about. Or what they, how they dress or how they look. I thought I would never live to see this. Why came to God's word? I thought I would never live to see this. I really did. If I could see this stuff going on now, it's getting worse and worse each and every day. So. Please listen closely and stay strong. And I know you can't see the board. You probably can't. If you can't, I will say the, uh, the scriptures out loud so you can write them down and you can study in your own study the scripture in your own convenience. Let's get started. Turn to me to Hebrew chapter six and verse ten. That's Hebrews chapter six and verse ten. Once again, that's Hebrew. Chapter 6 and verse 10.
And it reads, For God is not a righteousness, a righteous, excuse me, to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Before I go any further with that, first of all, God is not a righteous to forget your labor of love. Break it down for, uh, to you. See, Christ is those who love you keeps my word. You labor in his word, in the gospel. You labor in the gospel, in his word. And he's not a righteous to forget that. Okay. Uh, which you have showed toward his name. His name is the word of God. His name is the word of God. And you labor in the gospel towards his name. His name is the word of God. And you name it. You labor in the gospel. I promise you, I will show you that in the next scripture. You labor in the gospel in his name. God, Jesus Christ, remember, Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, the life. No man comes through the Father in, 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 in gospel of John but by me. So you got what? Labor in the gospel. Go through the gospel. You get to God. You got to go through Christ. Right here. He's the word. To get to God. That's the only way. No other way. If somebody in these churches which and on the internet, which I know they lies a lot, tell you any, uh, tell you anything different than what the Bible is saying, how you get to heaven, they're lying to you. Know the word of God for yourself. Then you'll know the truth for yourself. Because I didn't know it years ago. Trust me, I didn't know it years ago. I kept on listening to what everybody was saying. The preacher was saying, other people were saying, you know what? Well, my life would never would change at all. And I can see the reason why I was still exactly the same way, because I didn't know nothing. I'm listening to what people are saying. This, 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 uh, uh, this worldly doctrine. I'm listening to what people are saying. And that's what God, that's what God's word is saying. Soon as I saw this to the God's word, my whole life started changing. But, he tells us that. And the only way you can minister to the saints, this is very close to, the only way you can minister to the saints, Minister what? His name, the gospel, the word of God. If you don't know the gospel, how can you minister to somebody? If you don't know, and I'm going to show you that as well. Through scripture. Talk strictly from the Bible. How can you minister to somebody if you don't know the gospel yourself? That's just plain common sense. That's like saying, uh, like I said, I go out here and, and, and ride a bicycle or fly, better yet, I fly an airplane, but I don't know how to fly. I'm gonna fly you. I'm, I'm gonna fly you to uh, uh, Las Vegas, but I don't know how to fly. The exact same thing. So how can I minister to somebody if I don't know the gospel? Okay, but we, let me break this down to you. Turn to me from Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four, verse three. That is Philippians. Chapter 4, and verse 3. Philippians, chapter 4, and verse 3. Once again, Philippians, chapter 4, and verse 3. And it reads, And I entreat thee also to yoke fellow, help those women which labor, they're going to labor again with me in the gospel. What you labor in? You labor in the gospel. What God will, what God will forget? Your labor in love, you labor in the gospel. With Clement also and with other my fellow laborers, other people who labor in the gospel, whose names are in the book of life. Because if you labor in the gospel, I promise, if that's when you labor in it and you obey it, your name will be written in the book of life. When you, so God is not a righteous forget those who labor, the labor of love, cover his name, you labor in the gospel. The gospel is called the word of the gospel. You labor in his name and the word of God. And that's the reason, that's, that's true, but that's how you can labor, labor. When you go out here and labor, some people think you labor, which I'm not saying nothing wrong with this. 
But some people thinking because they're getting taught that they labor in church or in the pantry or you labor out here, uh, uh, drill things around the, uh, the, 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 uh, the church building, you know, like painting, whatever, that's my labor. Because I thought that before, I lived in Wichita years ago. That's my labor. I'm going to hell because I'm doing that. That is not the truth. But, you, but some people would go out here and teach things like that. And to have you believe that you're going to hell because you're doing that. And you don't know God at all. And that's a total outright lie. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not nothing wrong with hang, uh, uh, helping out in church. I help you do this. I can help you do this. I have this. It's nothing wrong with that. But that is not the labor of love that what the Bible is talking about. Okay. When you labor in the gospel, you labor in what? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are written in the what? The book of life. If you're not laboring in the gospel, you're not written in what? The book of life. You're written in the book. It's two books, like it says in the Bible. Right? The, one, the ones who are quickened by the Spirit, that one, that's, that's the one who will have eternal life. Those are the ones who have eternal life, excuse me. And the ones who are twice dead. There's two books you're going to be judged out of. The ones who are written in the book of life will have eternal life. The ones who are not, eternal damnation, eternal hell. All you have to do is pick up the Bible store, read and study it for yourself. But if you labor in the gospel, you labor in, 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 in God's name. Jesus Christ is the word. We got to go through Christ. Jesus Christ, I am the truth, the way, the light. No man come before me. Come through me, uh, come to God, but by me. You got to go through this. But you have to obey it. There's no reason. You got to obey it. Don't let Satan have you out here putting everything else first and not your eternal soul. So that's staying Philippians. Let's turn over so you can see for yourself. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. That is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. One more time. That Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Now, when you, when you labor in the gospel, you, uh, you, when you labor in God's name, you labor in, then we should solve you labor in the gospel. The gospel is called the word of the gospel. As you, as you labor in the word of God. Okay, look right here. This is how you minister to the saints, right here. Like it says in Hebrew, verse 27, only let your conversation be as in becoming the gospel of Christ. We labor. We labor. We labor. We labor. In the gospel. That's how your conversation can be so become the gospel of Christ. But before that, before we do the gospel, I gotta go out here and tell somebody about the gospel if I don't know it. My my, my I was saying something totally different. I promise you, it wasn't the gospel. But when you start laboring the gospel, like it says in Hebrew, at Philippians, you labor in God's name in Hebrew, Philippians laboring the gospel, name written in the book of life. Now, your conversation is about the gospel of Christ. It's about the gospel of Christ. And you try to go out here and bring others to the truth of God's word. Which you give them eternal life as well. You try to go out here and bring others to the truth. You ain't going out here to say things like I said, book of Proverbs, to make you feel better. You ain't going out saying that, to make you feel better. People said people go to church all the time and listen to what the pastor, preacher, minister, post what they say. And the majority of them saying things to make you feel good. So you keep on coming back. And I promise you that. I remember. Uh, somebody told me that, that people get a lesson. Ministers, preachers, and popes get lessons offline so they can minister to y'all that Sunday. They can tell you anything. If you don't know the word of God, you are you, you don't get you can be the big you can be deceived, trust me. You don't know the word of God. Okay, I say it right here, uh, you gotta be a doer of the word, not just a hearer in the book of James. Okay, you only deceive your own self by being a hearer. You deceive your own self. You got to be a doer of the word. Know the word. Labor in the gospel. Know the word. I'll oh, so let me keep on reading. Verse 27 again. Philippians. 
or let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of you, your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. Because of what? The words, Jesus Christ said, the words of spirit and it's life. Gospel of John chapter 6, 62 to 63. The words of spirit and it's life. Stay fast in one spirit. With one mind, strive together for the faith of the gospel. <coughs> Matter of fact, it's saying the word of the gospel. Because think about hearing the word of God. It says by the faith of the gospel, it's saying the word of the gospel. <laughs> he tell you what to do. The gospel. He's telling us all what to do. We gotta stay fast in the word. Stay strong. Let nobody don't be moved at all. Stay strong in one spirit. See, Christ tells us the words of spirit and it's life. Gospel of John chapter six, verse sixty-two and sixty-three. The words of spirit and it is eternal life. Strive together by the striving together with the faith of the gospel. Faith can by hear what the word of God. So he actually faith is what the word of God actually said the word of the gospel. You gotta stay strong in God's word. If you stay strong in that, and you, once again, I think I brought less than last, but you gotta obey the gospel, not just read it. You have to obey because you're not obeying, you ain't doing nothing. Okay. Let's stay in Philippians once again. And turn with me to uh, uh, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. And it reads, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, obey, not as in my uh, presence only, but now much more in my absence. Uh, Paul wrote this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, once you bring up, once your cop, I'm showing you, the, the, I'm, I'm showing this for a reason. Once you, once, your, uh, once you labor uh, in God's name, you labor in the gospel. And, and then once, and, and Philippians tell us your conversation start so, so become what? The gospel of Christ. It start become what? The gospel of Christ. And then we saw, we just got through reading right, right a second ago, work out your own salvation, fair and trevor. And you know, I wasn't going to go there, but I'm going to have to go here real fast. Uh, go with the Romans. Go to the Romans. Please. Romans chapter 1. That's how you work out your own salvation. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. That's Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. That's Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Paul wrote, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Salvation. To everyone that believe it, to the uh, Jew first and also to the Greek. That's how you work out your salvation through the gospel. Once I bring, once a person go out here, they know the gospel, they bring you to the gospel. Now you work out your own salvation in fear and trembling through the gospel. And that's the only way you have eternal life. It's a power of God, it's a gospel. And give and to those that believe the gospel and, and, and give you salvation through the gospel. Nothing else. I hear so many people say so many things out here. Especially on this internet, so many things that people follow this. I cannot believe that. I'm like, come on. This is your eternal soul here. This, this is not a game. And one day we go to die, we have to stand in front of God and be judged where our eternal soul is going. If you haven't obeyed the gospel, where do you think you're going? This is here for a reason. But I had to go there. That's how you work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. No, it's the only way you can work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Through the gospel. Right here. Romans 1.16. 
matter of fact, I, I, matter of fact, I was gonna go there, but I put it up there, Romans one sixteen. That's how you work out your own salvation, fair trembling, through the gospel. If you believe the gospel, so say I believe it, and you ain't obeying it. You ain't doing nothing but hurting yourself, obey it. And I know it's hard. Trust me, so much pleasure out here. You look at Satan has so many different pleasures out here, you know what? They keep your eyes just looking at it. You know, there's so many pleasures out here. He got way if you're alcoholic, he got alcohol out here. If you are uh, a, a drug, like to do drugs, he got drugs out here. If you're a sex addict, he got a, 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 a women's abyss out here for you. If you uh, if you like to gamble a lot, he got gambling out here for you. He got boats everywhere. He got so many things out here. Death can lead your soul straight to hell if you're not careful. And what I say to you, I promise you, I tell myself that as well. It's a lot of temptation out here. But you got to stay strong, stay in God's way, no matter what, when you fall down, you get back up, and you keep on fighting for salvation, right in this God's holy name. No matter what. Okay? Once you give up, Satan got you for eternity. And that's what Satan wants. A true worshiper of God who follow God by his word, the gospel, and labor in the gospel, it's not going to give up. They might fall, but they're not going to give up. They'll keep on fighting for that's the, that one day salvation rightness. That's what they want, eternal life. They're not going to give up. Now, I, I'm going to show you this. The promise of life was in Christ Jesus. Go back to Hebrews real fast with me. To finish up in Hebrews. Well, finish up in Hebrews so I can show you this. What say Hebrew chapter? I think of chapter six. Yeah, six. I start verse ten again. Hebrew chapter six, verse ten again. The Hebrew chapter six and verse ten again. For God is not a righteous to forget your work and labor of love which He has shown toward His name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of the hope until the end. That ye not that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Through what? Faith. Faith about hearing the word of God, who we heard from, our Lord Jesus Christ, through faith and God to have patience. Trust me. I tell that myself, I also have patience, to have patience, you can have patience, right? I tell myself all the time, and I think I'm, I'm getting better. I was, because I trust me, I know, because I know years back, I know I had no patience. I, I think I'm getting better, and I thank God for that, and I pray for, keep praying for patience. And I'm not here saying, hey, I don't make mistakes. I'm not here saying, I'm perfect, you know, I'm perfect, you know, I'm perfect in the three Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Yeah, the three Godhead, how they dwell in you, before I go, I make mistakes on this earth. I'm not running around saying, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm what I'm saying. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. Because a lot of people say that, and I'm not. <clears throat> a true believer in Christ will know that he makes mistakes out here, but he got to keep on fighting for the salvation of rightness in God's holy name, his word. But the promise of life, which is Christ Jesus. And I have to show you this. Look at Timothy. The promise of life. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, at verse 1. 2 Timothy, at verse 1. 2 Timothy, the promise of life, through patience, faith, faith and patience, inherit the promise. What's the promise? What that promise is? Okay. And 2 Timothy, at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Where is the promise of life at? It's in Christ Jesus. How? How? Let me show you. Look at 1 John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. That 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. The promise of life is Christ Jesus. Well, how is that? That is 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. I'm going to 4. 
at first John chapter 1 and verse 1. What's the problems of life? It's in Christ Jesus. Listen very closely to those who teach the word of God out here. That which were from the beginning. The apostles saying this. Which we have heard. Which we have seen with our own eyes. Which we have looked upon. And our hands have held on the word of life. So how can I have life? By his word. <laughs> how can I have life? What's the problems of life? Is it Christ Jesus? What their hands have handled? They handle Christ Jesus. He's the word of life. So, if I obey the word, I should have what? Life. If I obey it, I should have life. He's the word of life. Is it in Christ Jesus? It's right here. That's how you get to the, uh, go to get to the Father. Go through the Son, through his word. And get to the Father. Because the word was God. Well, that's the problems of life. Look at the book of life. Let's go to Ephesians. So you, uh, so you really can understand what I'm saying again. If you can't, if you can't grasp the concept right now, what I'm saying, maybe, maybe this will help you out. Look at the Book of Ephesians, chapter three, and verse four. There's Book of Ephesians, chapter three, four through six. That Book of Ephesians, chapter three, four through six. This is what Paul wrote. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. When you read, read this. You understand the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, and it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So you don't know, that's what, who revealed it to you? Spirit. You won't know. Nothing. Probably, it's all through the Bible, the Holy Ghost revealed to you, revealed to you, but you won't know nothing unless, unless Spirit revealed it to you. God is 100% real. Okay. This is, this is very closely. Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. That's us, Gentile. You got Jews and Gentiles. If you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. That the Gentiles should be the fellow heirs and of the same body, which the body is the church. God, Jesus, God, Jesus built the church. He had the same to the church. That's at his body. If you're in that word, you're in his body. You, when you obey it, you know, I can't worry so spirit. All right? That flesh and blood cannot go come through, uh, go through, uh, come through Christ, but only the spirit. A voice, uh, I, I keep on reading it. And uh, let's start again. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs in the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. <laughs> what we did, we had got we got hell what in us? The gospel. Don't let nobody tell you nothing. That's the promise of life in Christ Jesus by the gospel. You gotta have that gospel in you. I don't understand why somebody would say something totally different and they actually not just pick up the Bible on a, on, on a Saturday night or an early Sunday morning to try to find a lesson or get out the internet and they stay in God's word and they stay and they labor in the gospel in his name that they don't know the truth because God revealed it through you through what? The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, all three and one. The Holy Ghost give you the, uh, give you uh, give you the, uh, the understanding of the spirit of truth of God's word. He give you the understanding. Got a, got a father, word, the Holy Ghost are all three in one. First John chapter five, verse seven. So you got the word in you, you got the father, you got the son, you got he is the word, and you got a, a, a Holy Ghost in you. And the Holy Ghost reveal the spirit of truth to you. God's word. That's another lesson. But God, trust me, it's rally right book of Corinthians. He revealed it to you. But don't be like the other people out here doing. Lean to their own understanding and not what the Word of God is saying. They saying anything. I know people just go to church and think they're going to heaven because they're going to church. Oh, my pastor said that. Oh, that preacher said that. Oh, he got he gave a good sermon. Oh, he said it. Oh, he did this. Oh, yeah, they were dancing, jumping around, and they're having a great time. I'm going to heaven. 
and think they are holier than thou. They don't make no mistakes out here, and they judge men and put people down because of what they out here doing out here. But saying it, the looks, but stop loving their brothers and sisters and try to help one another out by teaching them this. But it's it's this way we this world we live in. And in closing, my last verse. Let's go back in the Old Testament, Proverbs. Proverbs. That's what these people out this people are, that's what people out here doing. The book of Proverbs. Chapter three. Book of Proverbs, chapter three. Five through seven. And what people out here are doing right now, they are, excuse me, they are here listening to what anybody telling them and not the truth of God's word. I'm not saying not to go to church because I go to church. I'm not saying I'm listening to what your, your brothers up there preaching or your pastor, or your preacher and pastor, they teach the gospel. I'm not saying not to do that. But know the word of God for yourself and study. Make sure they teach you correctly because people will tell you anything. That's what they're doing right now to this day. Been doing it for some years. So I came to God's word, I really can see it so much better now. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 7. And it reads, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 7. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Uh, uh, huh? Chapter 3. I'm on chapter 3. Uh, chapter three. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Chapter 3, verse 5. Five through seven. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and leave not unto thy own understanding. When I said, trust in God with all your heart, which that's in Ephesians, you can trust him by the gospel, but that's the book of Ephesians. Trust in God with all your heart. Not with some of it, with all your heart. How you trust in God? The word is right here. Trust in God by this. It's in the book of Ephesians or the New Testament. How we can believe and trust in God by the gospel. It clearly tells us, I think, that uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 11 through 17. Ephesians chapter 1, 11 through 17. That's the only way we can trust in Him is by the gospel. Lead like to your own understanding. Don't let people out just tell you anything. That's what they're doing. They lead to their own understanding. In all the ways that knowledge Him. And he shall direct your path. How are you going to direct your path? By this. All your way. Up. What did Jesus Christ say? Put God, uh, put God first. Not second. Not third. Put him first. Put the kingdom up. Seek the kingdom of God first. And all the righteousness. And everything else should be added unto you. But you got to seek him first. And he will. Seek him through this. And he'll direct your path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Be not wise. Oh, I know everything. Oh, I know this. Oh, I know this. Oh, I, oh, oh okay. Uh, and I'm not talking about the worldly knowing. I'm talking about the word of God knowing. I'm not talking about this worldly knowing. I'm talking about what the word of God say. A lot of people out here is not teaching it at all. And I'm saying that because I see it, especially on this end of season. And not teaching it or saying anything to make you feel better. That's it. I promise you that. I'm still like, man, okay. Be not wise in our own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. How can I depart from evil if I don't know God? It's just, just that's that pillow of thinking caps on for a second. When I, we all have seen and felt short of the glory of God. We all have. So before I knew God, I was still sin, sinning. I could never depart from evil. Now how did that depart from, and I was going to church then. Now how do you think I can depart from evil now? Through his word. He ha, now he directed my path. Now you see the stuff is evil. You see, I mean spiritual evil. You can see it. Some evil you just can plainly see, but I'm talking about spiritual evil. You can see it. That book, that's back in uh, 1 John chapter 5. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. Anyone who's born of God, you know, I can see spiritual wickedness. You can see it. If I'm not mistaken. 1 John chapter 5, verse 15, first, uh, 18 or 19, one of them. But you can be born of God. Or Hebrew tells us, you know, I got a word of righteousness in you. You, 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 can, you, you can discover both good and evil. No, you got the word of righteousness in you. 
but just put your thinking cast on and really think about it. Well, I was doing evil. I couldn't be poor from evil. How can I poor from evil now? Only by the word of God and when you obey it. That's when you got to obey it. Don't let nobody myself tell you you're not going to make mistakes out here. But cast you all. Don't let nobody myself tell you oh, they don't sin. If you go to sin, you're going to make mistakes out here. But you're going to keep on, but get up and keep on fighting and fighting and fight for your eternal life. Keep on. Keep on. Okay, God's good. Like, like it says in the book of Hebrew, Hebrew, the very first chapter, God is not a righteous. Forget your labor of love, probably the name. You're not a righteous for that. You know you're trying. You're out there. You're fighting. And no, ain't no better pressure you have on your side than God to fight this evil out here. Any questions? Okay. Before I go to prayer, my brothers and sisters, stay strong. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that stay strong out here. When I, once again, when I tell you, I tell myself, stay strong out here. Keep fighting. Don't never give up. A lot of people had, like it says, in the, I have seen, and then the, and Timothy, the book of Timothy tells a lot of people had departed from the faith. They departed. They departed from the faith, the word of God. They departed. Do not give up. Stay strong. Love one another. And when you fall, keep on fighting for your eternal soul. Never give up. And let nobody tell you nothing different. Because once you give up, Satan got a hold to you. Trust me. Or, like I said, once you give up, if you give up, evidently you might not you might have knew God for the jump story. And most most likely you follow God. You might fall, but you know to get up and keep on fighting. So, but you give up and say God, so and then you don't know God for you know God for the jump story. Like I didn't know. I kept on going to these church and church church listen to all this nonsense. All this nonsense. What well, my life could never change. Never could change. What well, what's going on? What's wrong? Giving my offering, I'm, I'm doing work in the church. I'm, do, I, I'm doing everything the pastor, the preacher tell me to do. What's wrong? Why have? Why do I still have a big thirst for alcohol every day? Why I cannot stop smoking cigarettes? Why I cannot stop going to clubs? And why I will not get taught the gospel, and I did not. And then and they teach something totally different. I remember that now. And I said, wow to myself. Wow. But you got to obey this too. Once you get in the gospel, obey it. No, I, obey it. Love you, brothers and sisters. You take care. God bless. Go to word of prayer. Father God, I want to come to you once again. When I had to bow. Thank you, dear Lord, for your powerful word, dear Lord. Your word is so powerful. And if a person really, truly, and obey your way, Father God, it can change their world around, Father God. So we pray, dear Lord, for those who are listening and those who are here, Father God, that they stay fast and they your word, never give up on their eternal soul, no matter what, what goes their way, what happens to them, have to stay strong. Don't let Satan come along and put money and fortune and, and other things in their way to keep them from you, dear Lord. And we know your word tells us that Satan going to make war with those who keep the commandments of God. So as we did it, you're not keeping the commandments of God. His word, he's not going to make war with you. He has you for eternity already. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for so much that you do for us, Father God. But, the, but thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us to your divine and holy word to help us, dear Lord, in the evil day that we live there. And for so many people out here are fortunate of these things, dear Lord. Especially when it comes to your word, dear Lord, we just pray, Father God, you help them with bad time, bless them with good time, give things up right to their needs, dear Lord. That the light shine so bright in us, dear Lord, who actually follow the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. That it shine so, shine so bright in us, dear Lord, which will glorify you in heaven. And maybe, just maybe, those who see the, those who see the people who see the light of us, they won't come to the truth. The light of the glorious gospel, your son, before it ever lasts, it's too late. We thank you for so many things that you do for us. We pray for the churches out here who teach you the true meaning of faith and teach you the gospel, the word of the gospel, the faith. We pray for them, dear Lord, may they continue to do what they're doing, never give up, Father God. Protect them, keep them safe the only way that you can, dear Lord. And we pray for those out here don't know you, dear Lord. May they come to the truth before I'm too late. For those who have them, 
I have a lot of people, members in a church, dear Lord, that listen to all, any and everything, but not true men of your word. May they come to find you, and hear the truth before everlasting too late as well. We love you, dear Lord, before we, before we as we leave. May you watch over protect us and keep us safe, dear Lord, on our journey back home. And we pray all these prayers to you, Father God, in your divine, holy, almighty, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, dear Lord, for everything. I just love your word. I can't get enough of it. Thank you, dear Lord. God, take care. God bless.